Hey guys, welcome to a brand new mock series. I'm going to be creating every so often, not a regular basis, just as soon as I get enough detail and progress done on the mock, I'll post videos. But this mock will be a Coruscant mock on level 1313. The reason why I wanted to create a mock like this is I created this UCS style police gunship. And it took me a few months to do that. I wanted to have a proper presentation mock for it. So it's about three base plates long and uh, one and a half wide. Just about as big as this table. So I've always wanted to create level 13, 13 out in Coruscant because it's such an intriguing area of Coruscant that we don't really ever get to see that we could have saw more of if there was the video game, but especially since Disney canceled it, there's no go there's no going back to level thirteen thirteen. Only in the recent Star Wars episodes of the Clone Wars that we saw some details that we didn't see before. But I want to envision that in Lego at a larger scale than usual. Well at least large for me because I don't have that many bricks and I want to conserve the most amount of bricks as possible. And don't discourage yourself from creating anything because, say, you don't have enough money. Because there's many outlets out there like LDD to create anything you want with endless amount of Legos at zero cost. And easily render out a decent photo, even though it may take a few hours, depending on what PC you have. You can do 3D rotations of a single ship, like this one. Especially during these hard times. Just create whatever you can, no matter how good it is or bad it is. Okay, let's go and design into the mock. The first section would be like this first base plate right here. Would be the area where Fives is killed by Fox. And the middle section, about this section right here, would be the clone bar, 76 clone bar. And the rest of that would be combined with around Ahsoka escaping from the Coruscant police. That'd be really interesting to see. And this will be the top-down view. At first, I created it in such a way that it's perpendicular with the rest of the mock. So this rectangle will be the LAAT. And this L-shaped would be the platform. And that would be the entrance. But then I really didn't like that at all, since everything in LEGO is perpendicular to each other. So, so this design is created at a 45 degree angle so this is the police gunship and this black marking would be the void and these little rectangles right here would be the crates in the scene five hides one of the speeders and a bunch of crates so right there i'll be recreating that so basically it would be like this so this section right here would be about that large and just imagine like everything at a 45 degree angle starting here, going all the way down. And then the clone section for the bar would be right here. It's kind of hard to see when there's nothing. Here's a better visualization of to what the size and scale I have to work with. Here's ordinary phase two clone minifigure to the rest of the size of the ship. And the rest of the mock. Now let's go sorting. One of the worst parts of creating a mock is being able to sort all the parts prior to actually making the mock. And so here's some parts I have left over from over the years I've never sorted. And these dark red plates for, came from the Republic Frigate. I had no use for the set and I took so many parts off so I simply just destroyed it. So whenever you have a bunch of sets that you have no use for, just take them apart and you can use the parts for something else greater to actually having something just sit there, not doing anything. Now let's get into the time lapse. Some may wonder why I showed you a time lapse of me just simply sorting a bunch of tiles and bricks. But the reason is why each part of the mock has to be sorted individually prior to being created. So, 
it's really important to know different techniques of sorting. So I did it each by the color, and then later on I'll refine it by plate, brick, and so on. The best way to sort a bunch of bricks is to have at least something on the bottom of a table or something. So, so for this, I use base plates, so it's really easy for me to take up the whole section and lift up, because if I was to place on a table, it's kind of really hard to grab a bunch of bricks and tiles, whatever, but compared to grabbing a whole base plate, you, got, you grab everything at once, so that's extremely important to have some sort of thing on the bottom. So especially with this table, if you look around, it has a whole lip during around the perimeter. This is extremely important because studs love to roll off tables, and this will prevent it from falling onto the ground, which is a lot less hassle. Some of you may be wondering why I space these bricks out so far apart from each other. That's because I want to conserve the most amount of bricks as possible wherever I can, so I can use that later on in the mock. A lot of base plates were really dirty, so I had to spray it off with some sort of cleaner. And especially if you have the toothbrush, a used toothbrush, it'll work really great to clean off any dirt and dust that you have left over on base plates. And now I have to figure out a way for the plates to be connected at an angle, because since LEGO is perpendicular, it's going to be extremely challenging to figure out some sort of method and technique to have bricks going vertical on, a, on not any studs. Here's my first design for this shape. I really didn't like it because there wasn't enough detail along the sides, nor the top. And this is supposed to be vertical, so the green base plate is just a placeholder. But I looked at the photo, and it's actually supposed to be a hexagon. This is an octagon, so I clearly messed up. So let's try again. Here's a second version of my hexagon. I prefer this one a lot better because it's more detailed on the sides and top, especially how it has a sense of depth in the center. So, it's very difficult to create any shapes in LEGO, especially hexagons, octagons, pentagons. So, how I did this was one by one one by two bracket plates all in a configuration like this and then on the sides I put a one by two jumper plate connecting with a two by six plate and next you put that in the center and then you get cheese slopes and then a one by one modified brick Connect it like that, and it should create the desired look. And all I have to do is place it on the center like that. Let's go make one more. Here's one technique for creating Legos at an angle. All you have to do is get a 4x4 wedge plate and put hinges on the sides and then put some sort of tile or plate between the two to get that look. But this isn't exactly what I want for the mock, so I had to create something else. I created this, which is especially nice because this is the correct angle I want the whole mock to be at, or at least the front of the mock to be at. So, what I did was one by one clip, like rotated like 
10 degrees and then get two by or one by two clips and put at the bottom um, and connect those two with a bar and then place a brick on it and then a plate. So that's a better idea what you have. And then you get these wedge plates and then you put at that certain angle and then place right there. It has to be a wedge plate because otherwise this section right here will sh sh show the bottom of the plate, what's under it and stuff. So you have to get a wedge plate to create that effect. I've covered up more sections of this. I kind of ran out of plates, so I had to use smaller plates and place hold for the larger ones, but that's okay. So this section right here will be going all the way down at that angle. And then the exhaust hatch or exit will be like this, which will look pretty nice. Too bad I can't put some tiles right here so it makes it a little bit smoother, but it's going to be covered up and it's not going to be really the um, the focal point of the mock. So it's going to go about like eight or ten studs or uh, bricks high and then going to come over about that section and then at least another foot tall. I kind of lost track of time and built a little bit too much on I was supposed to, but I think it's great so far how it came out. Especially how the shock troopers and Commander Fox are like going to the sewer, which looks great since it has its sense of depth. And I use black top or black plates at the very end of it, so it looks like it's black abyss, which looks great, even though it's like a few bricks thick, so that's what that looks like so far. And this is the back side of it, which isn't, you know, pretty or supposed to be pretty at all. Well, that's just structure, it doesn't matter. I especially like the the black plates, because it really has that sense of, like, void. Here's a closer look at these panels that are removable. All they're on is just a bunch of brackets. But I like how these came out. They're nice and detailed, especially this one. That's how they're made. So this is how the hexagon fits on the entrance of the sewer. It just kind of like, just kind of sits on there. And you rotate it. So we're wrapping up everything on this first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed what I made so far. I surely do. So the next episode, I'm going to be working on the second level. And the platform. And the backside structure. I'd appreciate some feedback in the comments below. Stay safe, keep building, have a good day.